There are several different approaches that we as scientists can take when trying to work out the impacts of man-made noise on organisms. We have spent about the last uh, four years developing a series of experiments that look at physiology, behaviour, uh, reproduction, growth, development in fish and invertebrates. Um, but that's been done very much in controlled conditions. The big challenge is to try and under, uh, work out how we can take those experiments and use them offshore. One approach is to look at natural variation, to go out and collect observational data of animals in their natural habitat around real sound sources. The big advantage of that approach is that it's ecologically valid. The animals are behaving naturally in their own environment. The disadvantage though is that you often can't isolate the effect of noise itself. Variation could be caused by all sorts of other things uh, that differ in the conditions that you have been looking at. Now, you might think that experiments can only be conducted in, say, captive or lab conditions, but it's also possible, albeit a little bit more logistically challenging, to go and conduct good experiments out in the field. And those are really valuable because they come closest to being the behaviour and the responses that you would see in natural conditions, but with the power of uh, an experiment behind them. Another approach is to use long-term data sets collected perhaps for another purpose, uh, but say combine fisheries data with uh, long-term monitoring of noise to see whether uh, effects are detectable in those longer-term data sets. The strengths of this are that you're really looking at the whole community, you're getting at um, a possibly commercially important species um, which the data may have been collected on. But obviously the weaknesses are that you've got other things going on in that environment. So you need to find statistical ways of teasing apart where noise will have been the dominant driver over other things. But there are now statistical modelling approaches that we can use to actually get at uh, how much uh, of an influence noise has been. A final approach is to use simulation models. Uh, to use uh, data that have been collected on say certain species and noise sources and to try and model the likely impact of the sound on those creatures. The advantage here is that you can manipulate the different parameters to test the sensitivity of them and find out those that might be most important. The downside is that you need really good data on the study species to make those models accurate. At the end of the day, a combined approach is probably the most valuable. There are pros and cons to each of those individual approaches and in an ideal world we'd be using uh, a combination of them to really look at the impact of these man-made noise sources on uh, marine organisms.